The father and the son refused to lose our family. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. I'm Chris Bailey. This is part four of this five-part series. As we're looking at the war that began all wars, now we look at our high priest. And we're going to see this, this beautiful connection and this beautiful reflection of God's love now through the lens of Christ. And together now, our Heavenly Father and our big brother Jesus, his only begotten son, now work to ensure that the family continues even though we made a choice, even though we were deceived to leave the family. But before we unpack it, we got to thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button so that lets us know that you care. And also too, make sure you share this video with someone else, especially to let them know that they've got somebody who's on their side. His name is Jesus. The father and the son refused to lose our family. And we see their operation rescue here again in the same place where we've fallen in Genesis, but even beyond that and throughout the scriptures, even into the old and to the new Testament, the truth of the matter is, is that even though we are all prodigals, we are a prodigal people by virtue of our nature, by virtue of the fact that our great, 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 great grandfather made a really bad choice. We have now another choice. We still have choice, but hopefully seeing God's mind and Christ's mind will help us make the right choice. So we go now to John chapter 17 and Jesus is praying and he's praying knowing what's ahead of him. He's praying knowing that the cross is before him. Look at what and look at who is on his mind. Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Love this verse because of all the things that Jesus could be praying for, He's praying for you. He's praying for me. And not only is he praying, but he's prophesying in a real sense because he's revealing his purpose. He's revealing that I'm here, not just because I want to be here. I'm here because you sent me. I want them to know that I am a messenger. I'm not just Messiah. I'm not just the payment of a debt, but I'm also proclaiming that debt. In the same way, I'm not just the son of God, but I'm also here to become their high priest. Jesus is trying to make sure that we're on the right frequency and we see not just him, but we see the heart of God. And that's why now it makes sense when you read in Hebrews, when it says we see Jesus, we see Jesus now who was victorious from John 17 who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Do you notice the, the, the companionship, this working together for our good? When we see Jesus, who is asked, who is called by God to, 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 to be a sacrifice, we see Jesus' love to make the decision that I'll do that. I'll do that for their sake and for your glory. But notice how when it says that by the grace of God, he should taste for us what we ultimately should taste by virtue of our choice to sin. This synergy between the father and the son, they're fighting for their family. They're fighting for us. They're not fighting against us. Remember the controversy from the very beginning is against Satan. We are simply those who listen to the loser. And God is saying, I want them to see I'm here to save. The same one who made, the same one who said, he's still the same one who saves. And he's doing it through his only begotten son, Jesus. And finally, now, when it talks about this ministry, it says, and they truly were many priests back in the day, the days of Moses, the days of Israel because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, 
hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. <laughs> Saving to the uttermost, why? So that we can come to God through him. Do we see the partnership? Do we see the heavenly synergy? It's not just one or the other, it's together. They're leveraging their relationship for our relationship. He is saying that I will be the one. They, they, I know you want them to come to you. I know you want them to be right by your side. But if we come to him without righteousness or in our sin, we will be consumed. So Jesus says, I'll be the go-between. I'll be the paraclete. I'll be the veil that covers us, but brings us into the presence of the Most High God. Family for family, family for fellowship. That's why there's no greater picture of God on earth than a godly family. No better picture. Not any church, not any building, not any book. Nothing can compare to a godly family to show us that we all belong to the heavenly family. They worked, they sacrificed, they gave all so that we could be a part of that family. This is the promise that God wants us to see even in our house, our families today.